Amen. I love me some good worship. I love some good worship. Put your hands together for our incredible worship team and our musicians. Let them know how much you appreciate them. I believe we have one of the baddest bands and one of the baddest worshipers on this side of heaven. Come on. Hallelujah. So blessed, so blessed, so blessed by the worship. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking around. I see all these boxes. Someone say demolish the box. Someone say demolish that box. Well, today is the last day, y'all. It is the last day. We are closing out Demolish the Box. How many of you have enjoyed this series so far? Amen. So many people have been blessed. We have received messages and texts, and people are just being transformed. And it's not by my power. It's not by my wife's power, but by the power of our King. Amen. The God of God is the one and only. Hallelujah. And so I'm so excited for what we're going to be sharing today. I'm going to speed through this uh, because I know that uh, I was enjoying worship so much I wanted to let it ride. Is that okay? I just wanted to let it ride. But there's maybe three or four nuggets that I want to get to you and get to you quickly. Is that cool? Come on. I want an alive church. Is that cool? All right, amen. I can, I, can, I can teach and preach at people talking to me and someone who is alive, but I don't like getting around things that are dead. Come on, somebody. I'm just that kind of person. I'm just that kind of guy. I don't, I'm, listen, t- listen to me. I, I, I don't like things that are broken. I, I, get, I get annoyed when I'm at home and there's things that are broken. I'd rather go buy something new. Come on, somebody. Like, I don't know, that's just who I am. Like, I get, it gets me frustrated. And so the same way that I don't like broken things, I don't like dead things either. Come on, somebody. And, and I believe that if you were to understand the value behind making sure that you're making a noise, to make sure that you're opening up your mouth because your mouth is going to dictate just exactly what's going to happen in your future. I'm trying to tell somebody right now. That you got to be able to exert and make sure that you are stepping above what you might be feeling. Amen? And some of us are on a high cloud. Some of us on cloud nine. That is even more the reason to worship God. Amen? It is more the reason to be grateful and open up your mouth and just say thank you. Come on, somebody. I've learned through the highs and lows of life to always make sure I don't allow that high to get too high. I think one of the most difficult things for believers is that as they're praying and believing for a breakthrough and to get to the next level, and then God blesses them with the next level, all of a sudden they're not as humble as they used to be. And, and, and so I truly believe that as God is exhorting or rather exalting and lifting and elevating us, that we continue to open up your mouth, right? Amen? That we open up our mouth. So you could be on one side of the spectrum where you're in need of something, or you could be on the other side of the spectrum where you're saying, I have everything that I need. I'm trying to tell you right now that whichever spectrum that you are on, you should be up in this building and those watching online opening up your mouth at every opportunity you get to give God some glory. So someone, somebody just say, my daddy is my daddy, and I love him for it. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so I'm going to dive into this word. I know I only have a few moments uh, to get down with this last, last series, or last sermon of this series. Uh, I'm going to take you to a scripture that many of you are familiar with. And the Spirit of God has pushed me to attack it from a different perspective. Is that okay? Um, As you know, I do like to teach. I like to unpack. um, And I'm going to try to unpack this very quickly. And I can get a couple points to you that I know God is pushing me to share. Um, So why don't we stand for one last time. Let's stand for one last time as we go into the reading of the Word. There's a declaration that the media team is going to pull up. I do want us to read this in concert. And then once we read this together with conviction, we'll get into the Word of God. So let us read this together. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. You got the rest.
Amen and amen. I'm going to take your attention to Genesis. Genesis, Genesis chapter 32. Genesis. Um, if you don't know what Genesis is. <laughs> Genesis is the very first book. So I'm going to say the first book. It'd be funny sometimes when you're in church and uh, the pastor might say, hey, let's go to this book. And you start flipping pages. If you have a physical Bible, you start flipping pages and you really don't know where that book is. But you're just flipping. And then you'll stop on the wrong book, but you don't want to keep flipping because everyone else already stopped. <laughs> Am I telling on somebody right now? I, acting like you already, you're at the verse, but you're in a completely different book. But you, oh, you don't want to keep it real with me this morning. <laughs> But Genesis is an easy one. It's the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 through 28. And it reads, And he rose that night and took his two wives. That alone is difficult. That's difficult. Someone say that's difficult. I don't know how you have two wives. Got my hands full of one. I can't imagine having two. Uh, let me not get in trouble, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over everything he had. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob responded, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I'm going to say that again. Wrestling to the break of dawn. Many, I wonder how many of us begin to wrestle with something but we let go too early. Wrestling until the break of dawn. And whom he was wrestling with says, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And so he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and man and have prevailed. I'm going to take these next 15 to 20 minutes and share with you on the topic, this is a non-negotiable. This, this is a non-negotiable. This is a, someone say, this is a non-negotiable. Someone say, my destiny is non-negotiable. Someone say, my dream is non-negotiable. Come on, someone say, my character is non-negotiable. There's certain things that I'll bend on, but I'm not going to bend on my destiny because I know what God has called me to do and I refuse to be average. I don't think I have an average accelerator in this building, nor do I see an average accelerator online. I'm sorry, but I have to get started a bit quickly today because I believe that I'm speaking to a room full of people who are ready to wrestle and take down their destiny and they're not going to be, 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 be quasi approaching destiny they're not going to be going after destiny with half heart or half effort or half energy. But I believe that I'm looking at a room full of lions, a room full of lions who are ready to take down their dream and take down everything that God has for them. If we can learn anything from Jacob, I'm trying to tell you that I have to get started quickly here 
But if we can learn anything from Jacob just to get cranking over here is that I'm not going to negotiate and let you go when I'm after my destiny. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm not going to let go. 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 Someone say I won't let go. <sighs> Last week we started diving into Lodabar and Mephibosheth. How many of you remember this? And Mephibosheth, we talked about somebody who had royal blood because he was a king's kid. Say, I'm a king's kid. Y'all talk back to me. I say, I'm a king's kid. So, Mephibosheth was a king's kid, but yet he was hanging out in a broken place. Um, he was hanging out in a broken place because he was lame on his feet. I'm giving a quick recap for those of you who might not have been here. And so Mephibosheth was lame in both his feet, hanging out in a place that was broken, a place that had no prosperity in it, yet he was royal blood. Somebody please just talk back to me and say, I am royalty. Because the more you say that, the more you begin to believe that, the more that you begin to hear that, because faith comes by and hearing by the... And so if you're hearing this, I need you to begin to also speak it because the more you believe that you are royalty, you will find yourself in positions where you know I don't belong here. There's a lot of times that if we're not uh, cognizant of the fact that we are royalty, we would go ahead and settle for just enough. That if we don't truly begin to grab hold of the fact that we are all that and a bag of chips will begin to settle for just enough. I was uh, studying this and, and I want to share this because uh, it blessed me as I began to read and understand it. And I was reading about crustaceans. I was reading about lobsters. And as I was reading about lobsters, I was understanding the ecosystem. Is this cool? I want to take my time and teach this a little bit for these first couple of minutes. And so lobsters, uh, I was reading about the ecosystem. And lobsters, as you know, live at the bottom of the ocean. And them being at the bottom of the ocean, they're essentially eating the leftovers and the scraps that fall from up, to, up above. So you got fishes and sharks and everything happening up here in the waters. And then the debris falls to the ground. And essentially, that's what lobsters pretty much eat the most of. Are y'all with me? And so because the lobsters are eating leftovers, the lobsters multiply, meaning they, 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 they regenerate very quickly. There's many, many, many lobsters across the sea floor. A lot of times, uh, lobsters have battles. I'm going somewhere with this. Um, and, and lobsters would have these difficulties and battles as they're on the floor. And, and certain things happen when battles, in, uh, when lobsters encounter other lobsters. Because keep in mind, they have to find a safe place to grab the food, take it back into a burrow, and eat their food safely. So it's very important for them to have some domain or something that they quote unquote own because they want to own this territory. I, I, if food falls here, I want to own that food. Are you with me? And so that's why there's a lot of difficulty at the ocean floor with lobsters. And so what happens is that when lobsters encounter each other, um, they begin to want to fight. Right? Uh, so the lobsters encounter each other and there's, there's, they, they wave their antennas a certain way. And then they'll have their claws in the air. Right? I don't know if it looks like that, but you get what I'm saying. And so the lobsters are, are, you know, trying to intimidate one another by moving their claws around and moving their antennas. And if neither one of them bows out and says, okay, you got this, they begin to engage in battle. And as they begin to engage, uh, the next level of engagement, if you would, is when one lobster pushes the other lobster upside down. And if the one that has been turned upside down continues to fight, then it goes into another level 
or the one that got turned upside down stops moving, and then the other lobster who's on top will back off and says, yeah, this is my domain. This is what I rock now. Y'all with me? But if the one that has been flipped over still has a little fight in him, he'll flip back over, and now they take and escalate this to a whole nother level. And now they begin to fight, and this is where it gets pretty dangerous because now, because neither one of them is willing to give up, uh, now they're fighting to damage one another. And so the way they fight is they'll have their claws out and they'll reach for things, their legs, right? They'll reach for an eye because, you know, the eyes stick out or an antenna. They'll reach for these things and then they'll flip their tail back and yank it. This is how the lobsters fight. I'm reading about this and I'm learning. I'm fascinated by this stuff and don't judge me because I, maybe I like fighting. I don't know. But I'm fascinated. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. These guys are like beating each other up and, you know, see who's going to be victorious. It's like, it's like a boxing match, right? And, and, so, and so I'm reading about this and one will flap their tail and yank, you know, a piece of the other one. And so they walk away damaged. But as I kept continued to read this, it, something began to really stick out to me, and it's that when lobsters lose, they begin to walk different. That the lobster who has lost typically walks with his legs really close to their body and low to the ground. Whereas the lobster who won begins to walk taller with his legs dangling really long. So you can tell whether or not a lobster has been used to winning or losing by the way they walk. Um, and I continue to read this, and, and again, I'm fascinated by it, and it starts going to a different level, and it says, if the lobster who lost used to be a lobster who would win all the time, that lobster would have such difficulty in dealing with the fact that it now is in a losing scenario that it would dissolve its own brain. And a new brain begins to form that is more subordinate because now it's operating from a mindset of a loser versus a mindset of a winner. And I began to see this, and I'm like, and then the scientists would begin to say, and they tell you this, you can read about this stuff yourself, that from that moment forward, the lobster who lost loses out on everything else. And now when some other lobster might be walking by, it can just wave its antenna, the more dominant lobster, and the one who is lost or scared will back up and just run away. Whereas the one who was victorious would continue to win because it's operating at a level of victory. And again, I know I'm talking about crustaceans, I'm talking about lobsters, but what strikes me is that sometimes as individuals, because I know I've been there myself, can I tell on myself? Because I know some of you might not want to tell on your own self, so I'll do it for you. There's been times in my life where I lost certain battles, and as I went into the next season of my life, I went in with my head down. And I did not know how to focus or operate because I was reminiscing on the loss that I experienced. Oh God, y'all don't want to talk to me today. I heard someone yesterday, this, this, this mental health expert, which I loved what he said. he said. He said that many times, especially in our specific culture, you're with me? In our culture specifically, many individuals, because of how we were raised, were raised based on performance. That based on how you perform, I will love you more. I'll celebrate you when you perform. I'm going to ignore you when you don't. And I'll be frank that I myself, my, my household was very much like that. We're Caribbean. 
And so we're a very prideful family, if you would, where I came from. My new household, I so this in my house, it's a little different, amen? Come on, somebody, amen? amen? Because there's certain things that you begin to recognize in one generation that you need to make sure you change for the next. Amen? And we can teach about this in parenting all day long, but absolutely the way I raised Maximus and Bella is very different from how I was raised. I absolutely love and honor my parents, but there's certain things that might not be normal. It's not normal to get hit with the rim. Well, my mom swung a basketball rim at me. I didn't know it was not normal until I started sharing it with people like Tacoa, who lived a different life than I did. Right? It's just not normal. And so in our culture, we typically begin to teach and raise our children to where you, based on performance, I'm going to love you. And, and, and because of some of this, I remember personally that as me being a baseball player and excelling in baseball and rising up through the ranks in baseball, went to play for University of South Florida playing baseball, when my coach told me my junior year that because of the two injuries you suffered, you will never get picked up professionally. And because of the injuries that you suffered, I can't continue to place you on the team because we have limited budget. And I need somebody who's going to play to be in uniform. When that took place, I went from, if you were, the lobster who had many victories to the lobster now who's walking around a little bit different. Because of that is when I ended up becoming homeless. Because my posture was such of that of defeat. Because everything that I recognized to become who I was or who I was to be was now ripped from my chest. <laughs> And I'm having to redefine who I am. And so now when I would approach a conversation with my chest out and my shoulders back, I'm now was very much like that lobster that I just mentioned slouched over. Oh, Y'all don't want to keep it real with me today. Why am I sharing? I didn't even intend to share this much in depth about this situation, but the reason why... I'm wanting to highlight this just a little bit. It's because we are amidst a series of demolishing the box. And if it wasn't for my king, if it wasn't for my God to teach me and show me that even though I may have lost a battle in my life, that that did not mean that is how my life was to end. Come on, somebody. That even you spent 20 years building yourself to do this and you can't do this anymore, then what in the world am I going to do next in my life? I'm trying to give someone some understanding that there is absolute hope for you to shift into another level. Come on, somebody. Like I was, I, it was a struggle for me, and I know when I see professional athletes, for example, who, 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 would, who would play NFL or NBA on, on average four or five years, and after that is done, they don't know who they are and can never rebound. And it reminds me so much of the character whom we're talking about, which is Mephibosheth, because Mephibosheth was in a moment of victory, if you think about it. He was a king's kid, being fed grapes. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he living good life. Give me a shower. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like two people just cleaning him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
right? He's a king. He's a king. He's, he's a king's kid. He's like he's living in a palace. Like the life was incredible. He was walking in a certain way. There was a confidence about who he was. When he would walk into the streets with his parents, everybody's bowing down and he's used to seeing this and people are giving him things. Like he was living at the top of his life and then because of somebody else who dropped him, he ended up now being lame and now he found himself in a place of low the bar for years. For years, he found himself in Lodabar, never made an attempt to go back to where he belongs because his mindset was of loss and defeat. And I have to settle for where I am, and this is all I'm ever going to be. So let me remain in a place of brokenness. <laughs> That's why I love David so much. as one of my favorite characters in the Bible because David, as the wise king that he is, he finds out that Mephibosheth is still and load the bar. And he goes on to say, you know what? Go fetch him. You remember this last week? He says, go fetch him. And, he, and they go and grab Mephibosheth and bring him into the palace. Because it is in the palace where he belonged. And then we end up closing last week with the idea or rather the pattern and concept, the biblical pattern of just like that, God will turn something around. <laughs> Someone say, just like that. Listen, your faith is what's going to unlock the key to your destiny. It is your faith. I can sit up here and try to teach and help you try to unlock certain things. But if you're not grabbing hold of the word of God, this is not the word of Dio. I'm talking based off of the actual word of God. And the word of God is demonstrating to us that just like that, things can turn around for you. Just like that. Just like that. And so uh, this week, just like that, I ended up getting a call. I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday, actually. My wife knows. A call to do something um, that would absolutely be game-changing. Man, I can't even, I don't even want to give too much of the context here, but I'm talking like game-changing stuff. Like catapulting to a whole different level. And I get this phone call, and I have a meeting today at 1230. I never take a meeting on Sunday. <laughs> never. My wife would tell you, my kids would tell you, never. I preach, and I'm done. Don't bother me for the rest of the day. I already work enough already. Uh, but when they said, hey, we want to meet you on Sunday, I'm like, okay, uh, what time? 1230? I'll make sure I'll be done with my message early. I'm not even, my meeting today is at 12.30, so you, you, so you can be confident that we're not going to be here past 12.30. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. You're getting it. Because when you begin to celebrate that, that means that you're beginning to believe that. And the moment you begin to believe that, you begin to receive that. If you want to really understand how to demolish the box, begin to really elevate your faith and begin to understand that God can shift something just like that. Just like that, your life can be absolutely transformed your bank account can look completely different just like that. The Bible says, if you abide in my word and my word abides in you, ask ye what you want and it shall be given. If you abide in my word, meaning abide means to abode, means I'm going to get planted in this thing. I'm going to live in this thing. If you live in my word and allow my word to live in you, you'll get to the point that you can ask what you want and I have to release it because God says I'm never going to go back on my word. If my word said 
oh my God. If you found a secret in my word, and it says that you shall have and be the head and not the tail, and you come back to God and say, Father, your word says that I shall be the head and not the tail, then God begins to remind himself that I did say that if he abided in me and my word abided in him, in her, that I have to do what they're asking. So I'll release the blessing. I'm trying to get somebody in this building and somebody watching online to begin to know that there's blessings that are moving at an accelerated speed. God is going to shake up your life and take it to a whole nother dimension when you begin to abide in his word his word abides in you and you begin to ask for something that will cause him to move <laughs> that's who we serve i'm trying to trying to get you to see it i told a group of men yesterday i was asked to speak at a conference and I told the men of the room the two most critical things that you can have in your life is control over what you see and control over what you say. That the moment you begin to control what you see, and I'm not just talking in the physical, although physical is key, intentionally get exposed to situations. I'm talking about how to demolish the box. My God, today, be intentional about getting exposed to certain things. If you've never been in a million-dollar neighborhood, man, you better set an appointment today. Call her. I don't care if you're not on the market for a home or not. I would call a realtor and say, hey, I'm interested in seeing this house. Can we set up an appointment for next week? And when you go through that neighborhood, I don't care if you're renting a 500 square foot apartment, but I double dog dare you right now to begin to call that, I'll come off the stage and begin to talk to an accelerator because I'm trying to mobilize and move somebody to faith. Because when you begin to operate according to the faith that's inside of your body, when you begin to understand that the God of King of Kings and Lord of Lords is inside of you, I have an authority to speak something. And that thing has to come to pass. Start walking through the neighborhood. That's mine. That's mine. I'll claim it. I decree it. I declare it. And because I said so, it has to come to pass. I double dog dare you do that. You want to begin to shift your life? Begin to take action outside of what you see. If you're living in the projects and you go back to the projects every day and you just continue to expose yourself to that, how else are you going to begin to shake your faith if you don't expose yourself? Someone say exposure. So I was telling them what you see. Then I started breaking down the importance of what you say. <laughs> what you see and what you say <laughs> what you see and what you say I preached a few weeks back when Joshua was coming up to the promise you remember this and, and he was coming up and it was surrounded by gigantic walls and everybody in his army was intimidated by the size of the wall. And if you read the Bible, I know I'm going out of context right now, but I just feel the anointing pulling on me. <laughs> that if you were to read the text when Joshua came up to the wall and it was gigantic and God had said that this was their promised land, that some of the people who came with him were like, what in the world? I thought this was the place of victory for us. I thought we were supposed to obtain this, but how in the world are we going to overcome the size of that wall? But the Bible says that immediately God began to speak and he told Joshua, see, my God today, 
I have given you the land. See, I've given it to you already. See that it's already yours. See that it's already, I see this building full of people. I see a new building that we are purchasing and there's going to be stadium seating. I see politicians in the room. I see people sitting at the White House causing legislation to happen. I, I see billionaires in the room and watching online who are shaking up the nation and building businesses that will employ thousands of people. I see organizations that are lifting society and taking it up to another notch. I see he healing taking place. The Bible says, heal thyself. Oh my God. I see it. I see it. I'm telling you what I see because what you see and what you say He can tell about He can tell about Shantala Touch two or three people say what you see and what you say. Oh my God, I felt that right now. I'm going to give you a couple moments to begin to say what you want to see. Begin to say what you want to see right now. Begin to speak to yourself, speak to your bank account. Speak to your health. Speak to your situation. Speak to your marriage. Speak to it. 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 The power of life and death is in your tongue. Begin to speak it. Got to speak it. Everybody standing, everybody standing. I can't get into the word because this is what the Holy Spirit has intended for. What you see and what you say. Someone say, what I see and what I say. My life will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how you demolish boxes. This is how you demolish the box. Come on, somebody. Open up your mouth. I'm not done. I'm not done. Help me out, musicians. Help us out right now because we have to get into a pocket of warfare to make sure that we get everything that's coming for us. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I need you to begin to speak it so much that you begin to feel it. And the moment you begin to feel it is when you're going to receive it. That's why I'm trying to get you to see and say what I believe I receive. I feel it. I am going to be a millionaire. Open up your mouth and say it. Say, I am going to be a millionaire. Believe it. I am going to be a millionaire. My family will never need again. My family will never be in lack again. I will never be alone again. Open up your mouth and speak what you want to see. Demolishing the boxes. Come on, come on, come on. Don't stop, don't stop. Keep opening your mouth. Keep opening your mouth. The literal definition of amen is so let it be. Oh, it is so. When you say amen, you're saying it is so. The coming together of your hands is a confirmation of agreement. That's why you could be at a Broadway show and at the end of the show, everybody stands up and begins to... 
because they are in agreement that it was an outstanding performance that was an outstanding production someone said when my hands come together it's an agreement say I believe I receive that's why sometimes when I'm preaching I'm clapping myself because I'm gonna tell you right now I preach to myself at times I gotta speak it like David did David said I'll encourage myself and there is times that yes I am a pastor but sometimes I do have to encourage myself and say amen to the Word of God I'm trying to get some accelerators to believe and begin to shake up their destiny and not let go of what God has in store every time I say something that you agree with I want you to clap one time I'm blessed I got favor my family would never lack my mind's at peace my kids will be prosperous I'm gonna be a millionaire doors are opening for me I will never be the same. I am an accelerator. Everything I touch increases. My blessings are moving at an accelerated speed. What you see and what you say will demolish any box that's been placed over your mind. Any limitation that people have attempted to place over you in your business acumen, demolish it with what you speak and what you see. Every time the doctor has given you a report that was contrary to your faith, begin to open up your mouth and speak what you see. Whenever the enemy tries to tell you how much you are not, open up your mouth and tell him what you see. The enemy tries to remind me of my past. I just want to remind him of his future. You can remind me of who I used to be and where I used to be. And you can remind me of how much I was hated on and how much I lost. But devil, let me remind you in the fact that you lose in the end and my life is going to be victorious and I'll tap into things that are unstoppable because he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Can I get an accelerator to open up their mouth and shout? Say what I see and what I say. <laughs> say what I see and what I say. Rabo Shantalababa can shake it. What we see and what we say in the name of of Jesus Christ. If you receive this message, this prophetic declaration, let me hear you confirm and put your hands together that you have received the word that has come forth today. Your faith, there's nothing that can demolish a box like your faith. Hear me, brothers and sisters, there's nothing. There's nothing more powerful than your faith. There is nothing more powerful than your faith. The text that I was supposed to preach 
Jacob was wrestling. And what we later learned to have been, my God, I feel his presence. Oh, forgive us, God, for lack of faith. Forgive us for lack of faith. That's what Jesus told Peter. He says, I pray your faith doesn't fail you. It's our faith. Jacob was wrestling. He was wrestling. He said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. To daybreak, hold it on. I'm not going to let you go. And the angel whom he was wrestling with asked the question, what is your name? And it goes to tell me that it's only when I hold on and I refuse to let go. When I hold on to my faith and to the blessings that I know that are mine. But it's going to come at a cost. Because the angel, when it touched his hip socket, and the Bible says that when Jacob was wrestling and the angel touched his hip, his hip dislocated. But he had his hip dislocated, but his name was no longer Jacob, which meant trickster. His name is now Israel. I would rather walk with the limp with God. Then walk straight with man. I'll take a limp with God any day of my life. That's why I believe that there is a requirement to tap into another level of anointing. That the moment you get broken, I'm trying to this my I'm just trying to talk to a few broken people, a, a few people who have been broken in life, who have been broken. <clears throat> and they're walking a little different but I'm here to tell you this morning that your walk is only resemblance that you have been walking with God your name is changed I gotta go all hands lifted eyes closed heads bowed Father, I thank you for every accelerator in this room. I thank you for every person who is watching online. I pray your Father this morning, just as you told Peter, that our faith would fail us not. That our faith would continually reach for you, hold on to you. We commit to not let you go. And in doing so, Father, we know that you're going to demolish every single label and limitation and ceiling. I thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to accelerate into our next level of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that prayer, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. That concludes Demolish the Box. Hallelujah. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed to have spent this uh, series with you, and I pray that you will. Did you guys receive something? Amen what you see and what you say. Amen.
And so before we get dismissed here, I do want us to give, have an opportunity to sow a seed. Someone say, I got to sow my seed. The Bible says that when you build his house, he will build your house. And so there's multiple ways of giving. Whatever you do, don't leave without putting a seed in the ground. If you're watching online, make sure you put a seed in the ground. Every time that I've been blessed and moved to another dimension, it was because of my faith coupled with my action. And I believe that this has been a transitionary word. So when you're sowing your seed, I would go ahead and write what I see and what I say. What I see and what I say. This is a non-negotiable. Hallelujah. Different ways to give. You can give with text to give, as you can see here on the screen. If you don't have a mechanism right now, you can give with Givelify, which is our given app. You can give with Cash App. Our handle is dollar sign accelerate now. You can give with cash and or check. Of course, there's ushers in the building who are happy to serve you. But we are here as a family to push his kingdom forward. Amen, amen, amen. So we'll give you a few short moments here to prepare your seed as the worshipers will come and jam out with us a little bit, giving you some time to prepare. Amen. Hallelujah. Was that a good word for y'all this morning? It was a good word for me. Listen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever. You say. Our God is an awesome God. And He reigns. He reigns forever and ever. Our God. Our God is an awesome God. And He reigns. He reigns forever Listen. and ever. Our God is a mighty God. And He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a mighty God. We just pray over your seed right now. We decree and declare that it is multiplied according to God's word as an act of your obedience in Jesus' name. Everyone on your feet. Couple quick announcements. This past Sunday, the Lord had me to put our praise team, our prayer team, and our adjutants on a three-day fast. Literally in those three days, we saw God do some miracles. Amen. I shared with you the call I got. Pastor Jayo just shared with you the call he got. Literally, we went on the fast that Monday. Tuesday, I got the call to be on the stage. Tuesday, Pastor Dio got the call for the meeting he's about to enter in. Now, and I told him, baby, listen, you're going to miss this me. I know Sundays you don't usually do anything. But this Sunday, you're going to take this me. Amen. Um, and many of you also reached out with miracles and things that God did on that three-day fast. Come on, it just takes three days to choke a demon. And send them back from when they come. Because the Bible says there's some things that require your prayer. And if you want yokes destroyed. Amen. So when we call forth the fast, I encourage you to jump on and get on that fast. Because there are some things that need to be broke in the airways so you can receive it in the natural. Raise your hand. Say, I will obey. And so I'm preparing you because during the summer, we will call for a fast for this church. Amen. Last Sunday, God called for the prayer team and the praise, praise team. Now he's saying the church must fast. So in the month of July, we'll have a fasting guide for you, but we will as a church go on a three-day fast. Amen. And in the month of August, we're going to have a baptism. So while you're fasting, pray about it. And you can sign up to receive baptism in August when we do the baptism. Everybody clear? Amen. We got to do spiritual first. Next we want to announce a man again. Father's Day is this coming Sunday. Dads, where you at? 
We are celebrating the leaders of the pack. We want you to know we love you, we appreciate you, and we celebrate you. We have a guest speaker, Emerson Morris. He's the founder of Fathers University. He wrote the book on being a father, and he's a dynamic speaker. So he'll be with us this Sunday. We're gonna have a hot dog bar where you can put macaroni and cheese, chili, all kind of stuff. Our team is doing it to spoil our dads that day. Every dad that walks through that door will also receive a free gift. So bring your fathers to be here Sunday at 10 a.m. We have another little surprise, so make sure you're here on time, amen, so we can spoil our fathers. And I just wanna thank the men. Come on, give God praise for the men. As we're preparing to celebrate them on Sunday, many of them went with Pastor Dio this past Saturday when he had to minister at a men's conference. And it means the world to him and to me to know that you all are covering us, you're praying for us, and so we appreciate the men that made time to go out and support. Amen. Amen. If that's all the announcements, let's do our benediction. Amen. Let's meet you out in the floor. You say, I am an accelerator. Everything I touch increases. My blessings are moving at an accelerated speed. God is accelerating favor all around me. God bless you, accelerators. First time guests, go to the back, get your free gift. We love you, God bless you.